what is going on people welcome to your 60 second java tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be getting back to what everyone loves most and that is GUIs so as you can see I already created a new class called GUI and I already went ahead and imported everything and you should all know what this stuff means for my last tutorials I just didn't feel like um having to type it all again you guys didn't want to watch me type it anyway so I went ahead and imported everything we need to import um, we'll figure out what these do later so um, if you watch my other tutorials you already know what to do but anyways go ahead and make a new class called GUI and have it extends JFrame and I'll leave that up if you guys want to copy I guess and what extends mean is it pretty much inherits everything from JFrame and we're going to be making buttons in this tutorial and JFrame has some built-in stuff for us to create buttons and the first thing we're going to need to do is create two variables so go ahead and put private j button and we'll create two buttons first one will be a regular one and then we'll go ahead and create another one j button and we'll just make this one a custom one one of them is just going to be a regular button and the other one if we spell private right it's going to be a button with our own images on it and i'll show you where to put the images and how to do all that good stuff so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this so hopefully you guys got that copy down because it well just because it's annoying me so the first thing we're going to need to do is build a constructor so go ahead and put public and just go ahead and put GUI or whatever you named your class right here and we need to build a constructor because whenever we create an object from this class we want this window to automatically pop up we don't want to have to call a method for it to pop up so go ahead and add no parameters and in your constructor body this is where we're going to be doing the meat of the programming the first thing we're going to want to do is add a title now this super right here this super keyword is how you call methods from the super class so since we're extending jframe um, this it is the jframe constructor so go ahead and the constructor for the jframe is pretty much a title so go ahead and write the title so um you know you guys didn't need to know that all you guys need to know is in order to add a title to your window just put super the title i just want to tell you guys um if you don't know what the super does it allows you access to your super class so um you know a little bit of information for everyone so now that we have a title on our window we can go ahead and make the layout for the buttons we can do the set layout and you guys should know this still from the last tutorials when we were working on GUIs and we'll just go ahead and put new flow layout just like that and now this just gives us a default layout so we don't have to code it ourselves and now let's go ahead and add our first button to our screen so we'll take that variable we made I name my reg you can name as your would you can name yours whatever it was new J button in this j button method is a method to add a button and it takes one parameter for here and it's pretty much the text that's going to be on the button i'm just going to name it reg button so now if we go ahead and add this to the screen we now have a blank screen that has a title of the title on the title bar and we have a button that says reg button on it well that's pretty good pretty uh neat but we can do better let's go ahead and make a button using our own custom picture in it and when you roll over it you get another picture so the first thing I want to show you guys is that I have two pictures already um, right here and how did I get these pictures here so I can use first of all I want to tell you guys when you create your buttons make them like 40 by 40 and make sure you save them as ping I tried to save them as GIF or JPEG and ping is the only one that like gave me so it could work all the time it Java supports like a GIF and JPEG and all the regular image files but for some reason only ping was working on my computer maybe it's Vista thing maybe it's not but once you create these images here's where you put them go ahead to my computer and you need to find the files you're working on these class files mine the default workspace are in C users Greg and then it is in a workspace and go ahead and go to let's see mine is in Bucky source and then this is where all your class files are like apples 
um, that GUI one we just created, put them in the same directory as that. So then you don't have to write a bunch of image paths. You can just write the file name and you're good to go. So your workspace might be a little different. And if you don't know where your workspace is, as soon as you open Eclipse, it tells you where your workspace is. So just copy that, find it. And that is where you want to put your ping files right there. So now that you got your ping files in your same directory as your class, we can go ahead and, uh, well, make some fancy buttons. So let's go ahead and how you do that is in your icon class and you have to name it icon um, go ahead and give it an object name such as B and what we need to do is put new image icon and this is built in so you can't change any of this let go ahead and put git class which is this class and then put git resource and this resource is going to be the file and the resource is going to be well I named mine B dot ping and what this does is pretty much take that image and save it in an object named B so now we actually have two images or at least I do I have one named B and one named X so let's go ahead and create a new one by pasting that in icon X is equal to new image X dot ping and if you're wondering alright what's this B dot ping and X dot ping they're actually just two images I made in Photoshop earlier so um, you guys won't have them on your computer, but um, I just w needed a little something to test on, so that's what I did. So now that I have an image named B and an image named X, I can go ahead and change those in the buttons. So what I'm going to do is take that custom button, remember I named it custom out here, and do custom, and for the value I'm going to set it equal to set equal to new J button and for my parameters it first takes the name what's on the button and I'm gonna name it custom and for the second parameter this is an optional parameter you can have the image you want to appear on the button as well so I'm gonna have B and this is pretty much just a little graphic um, it's a 40 by 40 graphic and it's like um, well I guess you guys are gonna see and another cool thing that we can do with it, if you said, all right, on the on the button we just created, there's an image. Okay, I got that. But what are you going to do with this X image right here? Well, that X image is going to be the rollover for it. So whenever we do, whenever we want to create a rollover, what we do is type the name of that button right there, and you need to put set roll over icon right there. Actually, set roll over. I selected the wrong one. Embarrassing. And the argument for this is, of course, the image you want to roll over. And now let's just add the custom button to the screen. So now we got two buttons on the screen right here. We have a regular button and we have a custom button. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be creating a class to so when we click the button, it's going to handle the event. And we're also going to be um you know that's it we're going to be seeing these buttons in action so and i'll also go over everything i did in case i kind of confused the by going too fast but for now my tutorial is getting too long so thank you guys for watching make sure you check out the next tutorial where we see these buttons in action so again thank you don't forget to subscribe and i will see you next time